Hello, welcome to Continuous Edge. Today we are going to transplant an evergreen native fern, Christmas fern, polystichum, Acrostichioides. If I didn't myrtleize the Latin, too bad. Mm -hmm. The area that we are transplanting the ferns to is growing under the shadow of a large black walnut. Black walnuts are allelopathic, or have allelopathism, or aliopathism. The ability to manufacture its very own herbicide. As the roots grow and as fallen leaves decay, they exude this chemical into the ground, which tells other plants, don't grow here, and a lot of them won't. Christmas fern will. Before we transplant the ferns, we first need to be rid of this evergreen ground cover called vinca, vinca minor, or periwinkle. We prep the edge of the bed with a rake where we'll be sliding in our shovel to remove the vinca. Remember folks, what we want to do is get this flat shovel up underneath and lift it like a carpet. The vinca mat will come up fairly readily. We also have Lily of the Valley, which uh, we do not want to keep. This is an aggressive weed. Yes, it smells beautiful. It's great in uh, bridal bouquets, um, but not here in our native garden. Well, that chore is done. If that looked embarrassingly easy, it's because it was. The soils here are particularly deep and very friable. It means they're loose, they're, they're airy. They're also very rich in compost. We've been building the soil in this area for a number of years. You could easily say that there have been four inches of compost applied to this spot over the course of the last few years. Transplanting does not have to be a difficult affair. Plants simply want enough roots to continue to sustain themselves while they get adjusted to their new location. For a plant like Christmas fern, make the root ball about three times as wide as the crown of the plant. We have some shrub roots holding on on this side. We don't want to disturb the shrub roots too bad. Pulling the shrub roots out of the root ball of the fern is definitely going to destroy the root ball of the fern. But since we are going to divide the fern anyway, removing the shrub roots would be a good first step. Here's a uh, here it is from the top, you see this like cluster of little brown spheres? That is the crown from which the fronds will unfurl. We're going to come out, we're going to make the fiddlehead, and we're going to divide these. And we're just going to hope these come apart. If it looks like they won't, and we're just going to break the crowns, then we plant them back for another day. Some folks use like giant forks to get in between the ferns and tear them apart. I like to just kind of tease them feel the roots, you know, you can feel them untangling from each other sometimes, and you just firm, gentle pull, you know, firm and gentle. It's got to be gentle enough that you're not popping roots, but firm enough that you are dislodging them from where they are. And it's just like a tangle, it really is. And, and so what we have is a nice healthy crown and a really nice healthy root system, which actually just went through uh, a bit of a shock. So we're going to get this in the nice moist soil soon, and then we're going to give it some water, and we are going to make a wide circle. A little cutworm here. This is uh, nothing more than a beetle larva. Uh, I just toss them aside and let the birds eat them. 
Some more of that uh, lily of the valley that we do not want in here. Some more of that lily of the valley. And now we're just gonna we're gonna make like a little mound. We're gonna make a little mound for that little plant. For that crown. It's a crown mound. And then we see that three of these fronds are gonna open up that way. To, we'll plant them south toward the sun. We're gonna flatten those roots out. See these roots? How those roots just fit right there, right into that hole. You might notice them. And then we're gonna take the soil. And we're gonna just we're going to place it on top. Now we're going to fill up the whole rest of the space with ferns. In the end, we dug up three individual ferns and we divided them into 13 individual propagules. With a bit of care and some good luck, the majority of these plants will survive. And in just a couple of months, this will be an evergreen ground cover of Christmas ferns.